Hey everybody, my name is Shai. And I'm Anita, and today we're gonna learn the beautiful heavenly language called Zulu. Yes. So the first word we're gonna explore today is Saubona. And Saubona means we see you. As in me and my ancestors, we see you. So beautiful. Remember, Zulu is a heavenly language. Um, Mr. Orland Bishop is going to explain to you exactly how important Saubona means in the first greeting when you meet someone. when people were still able to really see each other. In fact, the word says, we see you. So it's not a single eye person. That my eyes are connected to a dimension of reality we call ancestral, ancestors. So my seeing includes my ancestors. My seeing also includes the divinities that are part of the celestial spheres of reality. So Saumona says, we see you. And the response is, Yebo Saubona, yes, we see you too. Because it's a dialogue. Seeing is a dialogue. It establishes you as a witness to some phenomena that can also be a witness to your own presence. But when two human beings meet in this gesture of Saubona, the acknowledgement is, we see each other. That becomes an agreement because we're obligated from that point to affirm the reality that seeing has empowered us to investigate our mutual potentials for life. So it invites us to communicate why are we, if we're seeing each other, why are we um, here at the same time? What is this moment of time given us, given us to be able to do? So it's an invitation to participate in each other's life. Um, seeing the Saubona also obligates a person to give to each other what's needed for that moment of life to be enhanced. Next, I want you to say Buti and Sisi, which means brother and sister. Now let's learn how are you? Unjani, repeat after me. Unjani. Next, Ngiapila. Ngiapila, that means I am fine. Ngia pila. I eat Now let's learn my favorite word, ngia bonga. And that means thank you. Repeat after me, ngia bonga. African world is home team here and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series, A Closer Look. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the Zulu people of South Africa. And as always, if you want to support the home team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and Home Team merchandise are in the description box below. Before we speak about the Zulu, it's important to understand the larger group they descend from, the Nguni people. The Nguni people are a group of Bantu people in southern Africa who speak the Nguni languages. The Nguni encompass several groups such as the Nosa, which you're supposed to say with a click, the Ndebele, the Swazi, and of course, the most popular, the Zulu. 
The Nguni people are said to have migrated from the Great Lakes region from the north and various groups split from there, creating the groups we know today. So who are the Zulu and how did they come to be? In the Zulu language, the word Amazulu means Zulu people and according to Zulu oral tradition, this name refers to the belief that the Zulu came down from heaven as the word Zulu itself means heaven. The Amazulu name for the supreme being and creator is Unkununkulu. He has other names such as Mvele Nkungi, which basically means he who came first or ancient one. Mvele Nkungi lowered his two children, a man and a woman, down from heaven attached to an umbilical cord. On earth, they cut themselves free with a sharp reed. This is how the Amazulu came to be named after heaven. This is also why some members of the Amazulu royal family are referred to as Ambantwana or children because they are all descended from Mvele Nkungi's children. Another popular creation story states that human beings emerge from deep in the earth through a moist bed of reeds. Reeds are a common theme in southern African creation myths. The Amazulu mythology concerning their origin is unique because they are the only Africans I know of that state they originated in heaven. The very name Zulu once again meaning heaven, giving the Amazulu a divine, untouchable tone. I personally find this interesting because this sort of aura is something the Amazulu definitely projected in the world, their name becoming immortal amongst all human societies. In other words, the Amazulu lived up to their name. The Amazulu played a major role in the history of Southern Africa for the last 200 years. The Amazulu developed a distinct language well before they forged a collective identity or a centralized political structure. They rose to power under their leader Shaka in the 19th century. But not long after Shaka became their leader in 1815, the Zulu began a campaign of conquest and expansion known as the Nthakane, which led to the incorporation of many other peoples. A brilliant military leader, Shaka soon built an army of more than 40,000 rigorously trained soldiers. Shaka also introduced several important military innovations, such as the short stabbing spear which gave Zulu troops a distinct advantage over their adversaries. In a period of only 10 years, Shaka had built a kingdom, Zululand, that encompassed most of the area known as the Nato province. Shaka claimed absolute authority over his kingdom. His hierarchical leadership style was retained by subsequent Zulu rulers and later adopted by Nkatha, a 20th century Zulu political organization. 